So here we go, match day four is on upon us, is upon us okay? Now, uh, this is going to be the first week, guys, where you're going to get a little taste of uh, having more than one game in a match week, if that makes sense. So when Champions League football comes back, the international calendar, when those games kick off as well, a lot of those games are in quick succession. So this will be some people with your first taste of having a team playing you know, twice really quickly within one week. Now, the first team we come to on the Tuesday is a single match day. There's only one match. That's Leon. Also, Leon, um, I've had single match days already this season. Um, I forget, actually, off the top of my head when they played last. It wasn't Friday, was it? It was the 16th, 10 days ago. Yeah, so it's been a it's been a while for Leon um, since they played last. But... Yeah, single match day. It's going to be between these two guys. Who's going to earn the dividends? I think we've all got a bunch of favourites from Leon. We're expecting to see Denier run that close with Anderson. Um, in terms of midfield, it's all going to be about, I think, Oar, maybe Toussart, maybe the guy that won dividends the first time around. And then up front, it's really going to be a, a, a shootout, you know, <laughs> between Depay and Dempelli, uh, who's going to actually do it there. We're rocking to Tuesday, and again, we've got a single, uh, pardon me, we're rocking to Wednesday. And by the way, guys, if you're new around here, a match week for me is Tuesday to Monday. I count the Monday night fixture as attached to the weekend that's preceding, if that makes sense. So that's why we're starting match day five on the... Or is it four? Oh, Jesus, I forgot now. Uh, on the Tuesday going forward, okay? On the Wednesday, we've got a single match day again. Two matches again in France. Lille at home at St Etienne. And Nice at home at Marseille, okay? Now, Nice, I would actually expect to win this match. Um, Marseille have not started well at all. And Nice under Vieira, you know, the, the preseason results there were pretty woeful to say the least, but they started the season well enough too. Two wins against teams you'd expect them to beat, I suppose. But Nice have always had a strong for the last couple of years they've always had strong teams, they've always had good players. And they've had some dividend winners recently this season as well with Kiprian. And um is Yusuf Atal, he's still in the squad, isn't he? Um Yusuf Atal, or has he left? Sorry guys, I'm digressing, I know. Oh, has he left? No, he's not left. I, yeah, he did. Uh, Yusuf Atal, Dante as well, scored big already this season without keeping a clean sheet. And, um, yeah, there's a few players kicking about there. Definitely worth keeping your eye on in that team. Marseille have got a lot of star names. Paye, Tovon, these guys. But um, Vias Boas has not hit the ground running so far with Marseille. And I would not be surprised to see a Nice win and maybe pick up a dividend. But it's probably going to be the Leo boys that are going to um, or maybe this match in general St Etienne are not mugs certainly but um, Leland are the ones on Planet Index so we'll be getting the attention the Bamba the Kone the Wea the um, Awesome and Thiago Maia perhaps as well these are the guys that are going to get the Planet Index attention let's see how the match actually pans out but again with two matches on a single match day it is a real 50-50 split of who's going to who's going to earn the dividends on the day we then get to Thursday, okay? Now, the interesting thing you need to know about Thursday, this is not a match day, but the England squad is announced on Thursday, okay? So if you're holding any players that might be involved in that, then Thursday is going to be a big day for you. Uh, we're rocking to Friday, and again, we have matches on a Friday. We have a single match day. We've got five matches. Oh, five matches? Is it maybe a double? Oh. It is a double match day. Five matches, there we go guys. So on the Friday we have playing, we have Mets at home to PSG. Uh, that game has got goals written all over it. Mets have got Habib Diallo, Ibrahim Nian, and uh, they did really well in League 2 last year. And they've been okay starting this season, you know, they didn't do too well at the weekend there. But um, PSG have been far from convincing, they should win. Mbappe and Di Maria and Sarabia and Verratti, you know, Marquinhos, all these guys should really run them over. But if it was like 5-2, 4-1, 2-2, it wouldn't be a big surprise. And again, there's some cheap, cheap players in that Mets team that could make a reputation for themselves come Friday. Uh, in the Bundesliga, it is going to be an action-packed match between Leipzig and Mönchengladbach. Um, Leipzig at the weekend there kept it tight against Frankfurt. I think Frankfurt are the type of team that will allow you to keep it tight. They're not overly adventurous, but um, Gladbach are not that way at all. They're very end-to-end -end team, and that could be a real exciting game. Uh, Gladbach and Leipzig are both playing free at the back these days. So, again, yeah, that could be where all the dividends are won. Obviously, I've got an invested interest in Leipzig, but also in the Gladbach team, you've got Plie, you've got Turam, you've got Elvedi. Um, there's probably a midfielder as well It's worth mentioning His name escapes me as we talk So I'll have a quick peek and have a look 
in terms of midfield, there's been a few guys that did well there before. Like, um, Hoffman and Herman did well. Um, but yeah, otherwise, pretty straightforward that match. Action packed, and we hope Leipzig do the damage. And then we roll into Spain, Sevilla and Celta Vigo. I did say, guys, earlier on in the summer, Sevilla have got a great raft of fixtures starting the season. Joanne Jordan had Friday last week. He won best midfield and star man for me, which I was buzzing about. And if he did it again <clears throat> on this Friday, I wouldn't be too surprised. I would be a little bit because there's much more. I say there's more stiff competition, but last Friday he beat Sancho and Witzel in Dortmund. And um, who else played on the Friday? It was another big team. Was it Barca? No, it was in Barca. Uh, that doesn't matter. So, yeah, Sevilla could do some damage there. And Sociedad are hitting a nice bit of form. I did say about Sociedad in the previous video with Odegaard and Isaac and whatever that um, they could they, they could be a little wild card this year. And especially if you look at the last two results, a nice one will win away to Mallorca, which is not a historically an easy place to go. And uh, a one each draw and the Mestalla away to Valencia. That is a credible start to the season. Bilbao, of course, has started the season just as well, beating Barca and then drawn away to Getafe. So this game, again, I said that about the Villa Everton game, which I was right about. Um, it looks like it could be a tight affair, but again, if it did explode with goals, both teams have attacking talent and um, they'll want the three points on the Friday night, certainly. So Friday, all action, double match day, and looking forward to that. On the Saturday we roll in, it's also going to be a treble, we've got all the leagues up and firing again. And then when it comes to the Premier, the real headline of the day is it's probably, it's really hard to say, there's no real standout matches. I think um, Bournemouth Leicester and West Ham Norwich will probably be the most exciting matches of the day. Man City should blow Brighton out of the water again. Burnley we expect him to keep it tight against Liverpool of course. Chelsea, I'd like to see them getting another win. Uh, Sheffield United, that's definitely possible. And Southampton, man, you, oh, oh, there could be some tasty stories come out of that match. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else really worth mentioning here. Palace will be buoyed, obviously, with their victory. Villa are on the comeback trail still after losing to Everton on Friday night. But I expect there to be a lot of goals in the West Ham and the Leicester matches, and there could be a dividend winner come out of there, certainly. Or even Man City, if they beat Everton, uh, Brighton so heavily they could have a dividend winner quite obviously uh, we then we look at League 1 a Liga and again here's Leon's second game of the match day they're at home at Bordeaux in the 4 to kick off and again kicking off at that time on Planet Index can be quite appealing as well because you're getting ahead of the evening games and you're also everyone's clamouring they're watching the the dividends uh, you know the PB table for all the 3 o'clock and the 2.30 kickoffs, So there might be a bit of action going on there for you. Uh, Montpellier, they've also played Leon tomorrow. And uh, they're away to Nantes. And depending on who they've got fit and available, you know, they could beat uh, Mont uh, Nantes certainly. And they may have a dividend potential candidate. Who knows? We then look at the Bundy. And on the 2.30 kickoffs, there's nothing that really jumps off the page other than the Bayern game. I expect Bayern to hammer mines. And if that isn't seriously 4 or 5 nil, I will be surprised. And Leverkusen and Hoffenheim will be an action-packed game. 2 each, 4-2. Something like that for any team, really. Uh, again, on Planet Index, we're going to we're gonna lean towards Leverkusen because of the players they have. We want them to do well. But... Um, the cricket score of the day is probably going to be Dortmund away to Berlin. Now, as much as I like Leipzig and everything, don't get me wrong, right? But if Leipzig can beat this team 4-0, if Dortmund doesn't match or, or excel past that, I will be surprised, to say the least. Um, in Serie A, the big game of the day, probably, from the looks of it so far, is going to be... Yeah, the big game of the day is going to be Napoli-Juventus. It's probably going to be a tight affair, maybe a one each or something like this, but that will tell you a lot for the title challenge. There's been some stuff I've been reading and listening to. Can Juve do nine in a row? This game will tell you a lot about what you need to know for Juventus' credentials for the for the, the domestic campaign this year, certainly. I don't think De Ligt will play in this match. I did buy him thinking he might have started at the weekend there, and he didn't, and I think the thinking for Sarri is... Get past the get to the international break with Bonucci and Chiellini, and then after the international break, probably bring Delict into the fold. So I don't think Delict will play in that. I think we'll see a very much the same team that played at the weekend there, and then AC Milan. I really don't like AC Milan anymore. I've fell out with them so bad when they lost one 0 at Udinese, and I seen the team and everything. I'd Barini playing centre mid, and uh, you know, I'd like to see Brescia with. Um, Tonali playing centre mid and Mario Balotelli might be making his debut um, in that match for Brescia. I would like to see Brescia win that personally. 
Uh, and then in La Liga, Barca, will Messi be back? Who knows? Um, but that could be the dividend winner of the day. And Betis have really been floundering and struggling in their games so far. But they've had little shoots of promise, little green shoots of, you know, Fikir doing well, Canales doing well. And um, again, if Betis went and hammered Laganes, you might get something out of that for a dividend or whatever as well. And otherwise, with some of these other matches, nothing really jumps out at me. So that's Saturday, a very busy day, and probably the most open Saturday we've had so far this year for who could win dividends. There's no big headline game for the Premier League and that kind of thing as well. All leagues are backfiring. On the Sunday, we have an our treble match day, I'm sure. Let me just double check. Two, four, six, plus a seven. Yeah, we're going to get there, aren't we? Treble match day again. Everton Wolves, again, it looks like a tight game. Wolves have just been jam-packed with these Thursday fixtures. They've still kept their heads. They've still kept solid results, which is cool. Everton, if somebody is going to win this game for me, it's Everton. Arsenal, Tottenham, I'm not even going to predict that anything could happen. Nicholas Pepe could score a hat-trick. Harry Kane could score and make it 1-0. A 1-0 Tottenham, you know, I'm not even going to try and predict that. But I think Chabayos could be one of the standout performers on the day. On Planet Index, depending on Orton Dombele, it'll be between one of those two, I think, for who gets a real rise, who creates the goal, who's controlling the midfield. And I think one of them two are perhaps... Um, if Lo Celso was to make an impact, which I don't know, or Pepe, then perhaps. But I say uh, Ndombele or Chalabayos will be the two. I'll be paying attention to their movement, certainly. Uh, Lee Gunn, we've got Leo's second um, game in the match day again as well. They're away to Ream, and again, I'd expect them to hammer Ream on paper. Ream, off the top of my head, I don't think the results have been that bad. Yeah, 1-0 loss to Brest, 0-0 no, no with Strasbourg. You know, it's not the worst in the world, 2-0 no with Marseille. Um, they started okay I suppose Nice again their second game of the match day away to Wren Wren have been very impressive early on this season um, with the results they've had and with Camaviga the 16 year old he's been getting a lot of love on Twitter running at centre mid then uh, I'd be surprised if he's not been IPO'd by this point we certainly we need to be getting IPOs out soon there's a lot of guys that are playing and earning or it could be earning or not so this, this will be a both teams will want to win. Nice haven't played midweek and, and Ren being at home, I'd give Ren the advantage in this. Just for how strong they've started and how imperious they've looked in their results, you know. So, good on you if you've been back in Ren. Strasbourg in the car crash, Monaco. Monaco looked to be back. I think we've seen Monaco come back now with the result they had uh, yesterday, the day before. Oh, they drew two each. Oh, Jesus, but they're not 2-0 up. Sorry, guys. Uh, they were 2-0 up. Wow. Yeah, my battery must have died. Yesterday, yeah, I was down at the lock. My battery died. I did not know they drew. Wow. The car crash continues, I suppose. But when I seen the lineup and it was 2-0 at half time, I thought, wow, maybe this is Monaco coming back. But Strasbourg are they're Burnley. That's what I always say to you guys. Think of Strasbourg as Burnley. They're going to make it difficult for Monaco. And then Marseille and St Etienne again, both their second games of the match day. They, it's the late kickoff. Marseille, I'm not holding my breath on. I'm not really paying attention to them at the moment, to be honest. And then in the Bundy. Bremen and Augsburg should be an open match and Frankfurt, Dusseldorf, we expect Frankfurt to win. Guys like Ante Rebic, a boy I've been paying attention to, Daichi Kamada, would like to see them do well. On the Sunday, we have the Rome Derby at 5 o'clock. Now, this is an interesting development I've noticed. I don't want to keep the video going for too much longer, but this is an interesting development I've noticed, right? We've got a video, if you go and check out the reference points playlist we've got, there's a video in there called The Icardi Effect, right? And uh, we've seen a lot of Serie A movement last year on 11 o'clock kickoffs. What appears to have happened is there's no more 11 o'clock kickoffs. There's no early kickoffs. Serie A now always seems to be starting later and later. And I think that's to do with their TV deal. They're trying to separate themselves from the time slots that like, the Premier League and La Liga get. And they're trying to find their own time frame of getting airtime, you know, to make their TV deal more valuable. So I think we've maybe lost a wee bit of the Cardi effect. We still get that with the twelve thirty kickoffs in the Premier. Don't get me wrong. But um but yeah. So it's still a lot. Italy guys historically is our last season certainly. I think I'm right in saying it was the worst of the five leagues for PB. So I'm really reserving judgment on Italy than now. I'm really standing back and watching it from a distance before I really get involved with any of the players or any of the teams. I need to see how they do PB wise. I like guys like Milankovic Savage. I like guys like Jekyll and Kolarov. They've done well for me in the past. Um, and I, I would like, I'd love to buy some Liam Henderson um, at Hellas Verona. And uh, yeah, there's a, and Immobile as well. They've done great for me in the past. So there's, there's players I like, but I, again, with the new Matrix and with it not doing so well for PB last year, I will be, I'm just watching from a distance. 
And we've got the old farm game, so you're probably not going to hear me about anything on Football Index. It's all going to be about Celtic Rangers for me on Sunday. And then La Liga, we have Valencia at home in Mallorca. Atletico Madrid are going to win 1-0 again, as like they do every week. Uh, Espanyol and Granada. Stuff that I'm really paying attention to there. And Real Madrid, we'll be watching that with close, uh, uh, with close attention. Is Jovic and Hazard, are they actually going to start a game? Is Bale going to keep playing? What's going on at Real? Can they actually be convincing you know and go on and win so that's the Sunday guys fairly open I think Arsenal and uh, Tottenham will be the, 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 the key drivers and movers of the day depending on how that result goes out and then there's no Monday night fixture next week because that will be us then into the international period guys okay thanks a lot for tuning in this has been the next preview week 4 week 5 I've lost count but uh, it's week 4 all the previews I've done so far guys have been pretty nail on the head so if you're thinking about strategies for the next week going forward and you're on the fence then I've given you some food for thought, guys. Um, if you're new around here, like, share, subscribe, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.